What's up blockers? Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the Asus Tough 3080. Uh, some mod that I heard you can do. Uh, I believe you can do it to any of the GDDR6X memories. So it should be 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 Ti, and 3090. I'm not sure on the 3090 Ti. Um, I have not got word on that yet. I've had this particular card since July of 21. So I've been mining on it for about nine months. I really should be doing all the thermal pads on it, but what I'm going to do is leave those alone and then just do this one modification to the card and we're going to check and see how the memory temps turn out after that. All right guys, we're here in Hive OS. It is currently 53 degrees outside and we'll just take a quick peek at my temps compared to when it was about 30 out and there's really no difference. Um, so the air wall is working pretty good and the air exchange system I have in the tent seems to be working pretty good. We're up a couple degrees on these 30 series cards. Um, but yeah, even my blower Vegas, which are notoriously hot, are kind of hanging out in the 40s. These cards are always in the 50s. Um, unless it's real cold out, then they'll be in the... Well, they're still in the 50s, in the low 50s. But anyways, the reason we're here is because... I now can see my memory temps, which drives me crazy on this 3080. Um, I'm going to show you a real easy mod. I think, uh, well, relatively easy compared to ripping the card apart and changing all the thermal pads. Um, and I'll show you that process here in a second. I'm just going to crack this open and add another thermal pad to this card in a spot where it probably should have had one from the factory. All right, we're down in the basement. Give you an idea of the temps here. We've got hot aisle, cold aisle. Getting fed that outside air. Okay, here's the 580 rig. These are only using a 2000 RPM industrial Noctua fan. I took the Delta fans out because it was just far too loud. Now I'm going to put those back in and then use a fan controller. These are the ones you saw that were hitting about 60 degrees. Uh, they'll cool down significantly when I have that fan controller in there. And there's my little uh, script Litecoin miner. That's feeding the bulk of the heat into the house. But that's not to say there isn't heat coming off of these rigs as well. There's the Vegas down there. Those are my 1660s. These are the 30 series cards. And the card in question is this Asus 3080 Tough. And uh, we'll get that out of there, get it dusted down, bring it up to the bench, and I'll do that, that modification where I throw the extra thermal pad in there. I'm going to try to replicate these numbers so that when we go to check the before and after temps, that it's as close of a representation to the same conditions as possible. Um, this card is always at about 47, 48 degrees on the core temp and always somewhere between 110 and 108 on the memory temp. So just so you know, but we'll try to, we'll try to get these numbers to replicate on the way out. Oh, wow. That just went up too. I wonder what the deal is with that. All right, let's head upstairs. All right. First step, we have a total of 14 bolts screws to take out. There's four here on the X-Brace. There's four on the outside of the X-Brace. That's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's every exposed screw on the back of this card. Go slowly on these four screws here. Just take them out a little bit at a time. There's a lot of tension on this brace. You want to relieve the tension evenly just work it out little by little the rest of them you can just take straight out now as we go to pull the PCB from the cooler this heat sink right here stays with the backing plate these ones come forward okay so we're just gonna work this slowly there's gonna be thermal pads and thermal paste trying to keep it in place. See how that wants to come out with it? Just 
take this and flip it over. All right, we did a pretty good job. Looks like everything came out nicely. That's good because in the interest of science, I want to leave all of this stock other than the modification I'm going to do. All right, so the mod we're going to do, oh, I'm going to be careful of that, is if you look at this plate right here, underneath of this are the memory modules. There's a thermal pad that connects to this plate and it does a good job of, of dispersing some of the heat from the memory, but it also makes a connection. You see this thermal pad here? That touches right to that plate and it conducts the heat into these heat tubes. On this side, there's nothing. So what I want to do is I want to cut a thermal pad to fit right on top of this and transfer some of the heat to the heat pipes. Um, there's been some speculation as to whether this is supposed to be a two or a three mil pad to make this modification. I went with the gelid extremes. They're supposed to be pretty squishy. They even talk about here on the back how they compress a one mil to a 0.6 mil. Doing rough math, if that's possible, then a three mil should be able to be squashed down to a 1.8 millimeter. Um, so certainly two mil I should be covered, but I'm pretty sure the best results have been with a three mil pad. So we're gonna try that. We're going to get these stickers off here, get this thermal paste off, and then we're going to cut out a pad to fit right there and see that it makes connection with those heat pipes. So what I did to save a little material is I just went ahead and cut a chunk off right off the pad. It's the exact width of the heat pipes, and this stuff is crazy malleable. It's like dough. So I think that's going to work. Um, i got to get some thermal paste on there, and my paste of choice is this SYY stuff. Um, it's every bit as thermally conductive. It's 15.7 WMK. So it's right up there with the cryonauts and things like that. Um, but it's about half the price and it does not dry out as fast. I love this stuff. I couldn't recommend it enough. SYY 157. Put a little thermal paste on, we'll get this slap back together. Okay, so I've got the thermal paste on. You see these four dowels that are sticking up? They're going to end up through these holes and they should, they should stick up slightly. So we're going to very carefully flip this back over, line everything back up, and I'm going to see if I can see in there and make sure I put enough paste. I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty good at eyeballing that. So there we go, and contact, let's see, oh no, there's no way I'm going to be able to look in there, but I can see the, the pad making contact with the pipes, so that's good. All right, we're going to throw this back together, we got the 14 screws to throw in, the, uh, the four darker screws. With the springs will stay over here on this side. Um, I did end up needing two different size screwdrivers. The four that go on the X brace are considerably smaller than the rest. It looks like all these chrome ones on this side are the same length, but I just kept them in different stacks uh, just in case. So I've got my four that go on the outside, the two small silver ones that go here, and then my four spring loaded ones that'll go, go there. Um, yeah, actually that pad is, is keeping the keeping this up at the moment, but we'll see what happens when everything's been squished down. All right, stay tuned. One more thing, guys. When you go to start these, you're going to have to start one corner first, and that's the only one you're going to be able to feel the threads as they go in. You do not get the luxury of hand, hand starting these, these screws. So you'll start at one corner, you'll get that one started. You gotta push on this corner and very, very gently turn that screw until you feel the threads engage because you do not wanna cross thread these. Um, it's really important that these all go in there straight. Then you work the other corner with your thumb, get the screw started, do, do the same to the opposite corner. Once you've got all four of them started, you can then do your X pattern tightening uh, just a, you know, a couple of turns at a time. Really important you don't strip these out. Okay guys, if you look really closely, right in there, that's the modifications I did. You can see that pad's getting squished onto those heat pipes. Um, 
got all my screws back in place. If you guys are feeling nervous about taking your car apart, I completely understand. Um, I've been an auto mechanic for 21 years. Uh, I spent a good deal of my career doing transmission rebuilds and, and I'm a master mechanic and all that stuff. And still this scared the shit out of me because um, even with all those credentials, this is just, it's delicate and um, expensive. But that's why I tried to do this in a way that was easier than ripping the entire car apart, getting that other uh, cooler off, getting the backing plate off, changing all your pads. Um, I'm hoping this one modification is enough to make a sizable difference. So we are at the point now where I can plug it in and we can check that out. Okay hey guys, I've had everything up and running for at least a couple hours now. I had some errands to go out and run, so we will, uh, this has got to be pretty close to where we left off earlier this afternoon. Uh, we'll run upstairs and check the temps on the software. Okay, we've been up and running almost three hours now. Um, you can see we're roughly where we were. For the other temps, it is a few degrees warmer outside, um, and I would be used to seeing 108 to 110 on the memory. So let's take a look. Yeah, so we're at 96 now. I'd, I'd say easily that's a 12 to 14 degree drop from what I'm used to seeing. Um, so you can imagine what it'd be like with a full repad, but just that mod alone, um, that that makes me feel a lot better about that thing running down there. Um, uh, this simple mod alone looks like it's worth, uh, well, what's, I mean, rough math on, on 14 degrees Celsius, probably 25 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in that area. Um, so I, I think it's a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, really, I could have had it done in probably under 20 minutes if I wasn't recording. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's about as basic as it gets, and I think it's a really worthwhile mod. All right, so what's next? I got to get these cards cooled down. So that's where the Delta fans will come back on, and I will be using the fan controller to get some more air moving through the server case. And this card right here has a broken fan. Not completely broken, but it's wobbling around, so this guy should be run. And all these guys have been repadded, or not repadded, but repasted. Um, and I'm thinking maybe I'll get after these four. I don't know, they're newer. Uh, but I definitely need to get that fan replaced and then get, get more air moving through the server case. So that's up next. Alright, thanks for hanging around, guys.